Hi, welcome to another video. So, Anthropic has dropped Claude Opus 4.5, which is Anthropic's new flagship focused on coding, agents, and real computer use. The model is Anthropic's answer to the Gemini 3 Pro model, and they have also made the Opus model kind of cheap. It now costs $5 for input and $25 for output per million tokens. The previous models were $15 for input and $75 for output respectively, which is an insane price. But this is much more cost-friendly, and you can actually use it for daily tasks if you have enough money, that is. This launch seems like they are actually trying to make something that is low-cost and actually usable because they also talk a lot about how to lower your context, to lower your costs, and stuff like that which is kind of great. Though, it's mostly about MCPS, but that is also fine nonetheless. It's great to see Anthropic working on some real-world usable stuff. If we talk about benchmarks, then on coding problems, Ader Polyglot, Opus 4.5 jumps to around 89.4% versus Sonnet 4.5 at 78.8%. On agentic coding, SWE Bench Verified shows Opus 4.5 at 80.9% versus Sonnet 4.5 at 77.2% and Opus 4.1 at 74.5%. Terminal Bench 2.0 moves from 46.5%, Opus 4.1, to 59.3%, Opus 4.5. Multilingual Coding SWE Bench Multilingual has Opus 4.5 leading Sonnet 4.5 and Opus 4.1 across C, Go, Java, JS, slash TS, PHP, Ruby, and Rust, with higher pass at 1 and consistent error bars. Long term coherence, Vending Bench, improves from $3,849.74 for Sonnet 4.5. To four thousand nine hundred sixty-seven dollars and six cents for Opus four point five, indicating it stays on track over extended runs. For deep research agents, BrowseComp Plus, Opus four point five rises to seventy-two point nine percent versus Sonnet four point five at sixty-seven point two percent when paired with tool result clearing, memory, and context resetting. On safety. The concerning behavior metric drops to roughly 10% for Opus 4.5, below Sonnet 4.5 and competitor Frontier models. Prompt injection susceptibility is the lowest in the set. At k equals 1 queries, 4.7% for Opus 4.5 versus 7.3% for Sonnet 4.5 and higher for others. At k equals 100, 63.0% versus 72.4% for Sonnet. Again, the best among those tested. Outside pure coding, Opus 4.5 is competitive on reasoning heavy evils. ARCAGI2. Verified at 37.6%. Big jump over Sonnet's 13.6%. GPQA Diamond at 87.0%. And Visual Reasoning. MMMU val at 80.7%. Now, I have tested it on my benchmarks and agentic benchmarks as well. So, let's have a look. But before we do that, a quick word from today's sponsor, Augment Code. This isn't your average AI assistant. Augment Code is an enterprise grade AI built for real engineering teams working in massive, fast moving code bases, not toy apps or vibe coding. It's far superior than Windsurf and Cursor because of its proprietary context engine that delivers millisecond relevant snippets even across 100K file monorepos, feeding your entire repo, even millions of lines, into the best model available in real time. You get smart, in 
context suggestions that make sense for your production code. With Claude Sonnet 4 Plus Augment Context delivering the best quality at the same price, no model picker needed, Augment upgrades for you automatically. There's no need to switch editors. Augment works seamlessly in VS Code, JetBrains, Vim, and even Cursor. No forks, no compromises. It's secure by default and never trains on your code and supports customer-managed encryption keys. Your only build for successful requests, that's paper message pricing, no seat licenses, or complicated token math. Augment recently launched powerful new features like remote agents, which let you launch, monitor, and merge pull requests from parallel cloud workers without draining your local CPU. If you're ready to code with AI that keeps up with you, sign up for a free 14-day trial at augmentcode.com. Link is in the description. Now, back to the video. Let's start with the non-agentic benchmarks. And the first question is to make a floor plan. And the floor plan is kind of fine. It makes some sense, but it's obviously not the best. So, this is fine. After this, we've got the SVG of a panda holding a burger in his hands. It can't really make super good SVGs for sure, because this one is pretty bad. Then, we've got Pokeball in 3JS, and, well, it is quite good. It doesn't have any issues, but I'd have liked a better background. But this is also fine nonetheless. After this, we've got the chessboard with autoplay feature, and, well, it just doesn't work. So, this is not good. Then, we've got the Minecraft game clone, in Kandinsky style, and it is really good. One of the best generations yet. So, this is really awesome. We've also got the majestic butterfly flying in a garden simulation, and this is one of the best generations. Like, it actually looks like a butterfly. The physics are very realistic. And it one-shotted this, which is amazing. Silai Tool in Rust is also pretty awesome. And Blender Script is also really good. It makes lighting, camera, etc., which is great. In the general questions, it passes one math question and one riddle. This makes it score 74% which is below the worst checkpoint of Gemini 3 and about 26% below Gemini 3 Pro official checkpoint. But is it really that bad? Well, my agentic benchmarks don't agree. I tested it with Kilo Code, as that performs the best for me with Claude models, even better than Claude Code. And you can also use it easily through there by just selecting the Opus model in the settings and you should be just good to go. Anyway, let's have a look at the results. First of all, we have the Expo Mobile Tracker app, where I asked it to make me a movie tracker app using Expo and TMDB API, and it just nails it. This is one of the best generations yet. You can see how good it looks, you can easily open the inner pages, see a tracker for movies, and it is really awesome. After this, we've got the Go Terminal Calculator with Bubble T, and, well, it also nails this prompt. You can see that this looks amazingly good. It's also one of the best generations yet, and it works really well. Then, we've got the Godo game, and, well, it works kinda well. It's not the best because the health bar and step calculator are not placed very well and it even overlays over the menu bars, but it is fully functional. So that's great. Then, we've got the open code task, where I give it the open code repo, and ask it to add an SVG command to it, and, well, it also nailed this. It did it all in one go, which is super insane. Then, we've got the Svelte app, and it made one of the best generations yet. You can log in, sign up, create boards, add tasks, and all is stored in a database with SQLite, and it just works. So, this was also awesome. After this, we've got the Nuxt app, and that also worked really well. The Tauri app also worked well. This makes it score the number one position on the Agentic leaderboard. It still costs a lot when you compare it with Gemini 3. Gemini 3 scores... 71.4 for just $8, whereas Opus costs $48 for 77.1%, which is 
which is a really big price jump. The performance is astonishing for sure. It's a true leap in my opinion. If you have no cap on costs and just want the best results, then Opus is surely the way to go. It still lacks a lot in the front-end department. It still makes those purple UIs, which is very bad. Gemini 3 really excels in front-end, and Opus in back-end and debugging. So, maybe, you can try to use Gemini 3 for front-end tasks, and for the back-end and more complex tasks. I'd say that you can build a functional draft with Opus, and then refine the front-end with Gemini. So, yeah. I'd say that Anthropic is kind of back with this model, but the price is still really high. Claude Code limits the model capabilities a lot, even if you use the API because they limit context windows. The system prompt is not good, but when you use it in something like Kilo, then it works much better. So, yeah, there's that. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway. Share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.